are beginning indeed a grand adventure, and I hope that many of you will join us in that adventure. I hope you will submit a paper to the journal, and I hope you will, first, to make life easier for all of us, take a few moments to read at the website what the guide to authors involves that will help you understand our goals, how you can tailor, tailor your paper to our expectations, and of course how you can upload the paper and um, hopefully get it quickly into the review process, quickly reviewed and quickly published. I want to talk just a few minutes about our goals and also then uh, the types of papers that we're welcoming into the journal. Our current plans reflect discussions we've been having over more than five years. They began from my perspective when I was president of EPA and I became concerned about the fact that it seemed like a lot of conversations about paleopathology were going on in specialized contexts and we weren't getting that synergism between the medical scientists speaking to the anthropologists and, and vice versa. We had wonderful conferences on mummy science, on specialized infectious disease, good regional coverage, but it seemed like we weren't getting that synergism at the core in the paleopathology meetings in the U.S. and South America. And here, I'm delighted to see so many folks here who reflect this diversity, so I think we're coming back together as witnessed here. So we're encouraging the journal to be a place where we bring people from the medical sciences and the anthropologists together to really converse and talk and actually we may have some direct conversations in a certain kind of uh, publication or a certain, a certain kind of article that I'm encouraging that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Another goal is to draw back the folks or draw in the folks that do non-human animal paleopathology. There's a very active working group on animal paleopathology that's meeting in Paris right now as part of the ICAS, or International Congress on Archaeozoology. And they're talking about zoonoses in relationship to the human condition. They're talking about human animal transfer. And they're talking about host pathogen coevolution. And I think they should be communicating with us and we should be communicating more with them. I think they have a lot to offer. We, we also want to, as I can suggest, to provide a unified venue for publishing the best research in paleopathology. It's very obvious that there's a lot of, there are a lot of articles, a lot of contributions in paleopathology being published. And Jerry Rose, who continued our conversations about the possibility of the journal as president, uh, engaged in a survey over the previous 10 years. As you can see there, there were over a thousand articles published that they found on, on paleopathology in nearly 300 journals. And many of these journals had just one article. And, and uh, they wouldn't be searched, wouldn't have been searching then. And many of the, the smaller journals, the regional journals and so on, may not be searching them now. So really providing the unified umbrella under the aegis of the Paleopathology Association our journal, I think, can draw more together that will make it easier for us to appreciate the diversity of our field, its advances, and where we should be going in the 21st century. I'm going to be inviting some essays in addition to the uh, articles, case studies, and so forth that I'll talk about in a moment. For, uh, during the first year, we'll have a series of four novel essays, beginning with some discussions of general paleopathology from Don Gordner, uh, historical paleopathology, Pierce Mitchell. Don Rothwell will share his wisdom about animal paleopathology and then mummy science from our author, Heidi, who better. So I'm taking, uh, our goal here is taking stock and considering the future of our field. We're also going to be thinking about a series of articles that would allow us to become even more interdisciplinary than we are at now with our focus on medical science and social science, specifically anthropology and archaeology. We're going to complement our traditional strengths in community-based analyses, significant case studies and methodologies 
by some articles that will bridge even further out to specialists in correlative and important disciplines that relate to paleopathology, such as evolutionary medicine, occupational medicine. We have folks there now that we'd like to reach out even more, and bone biology. A series of voices or conversations paper, perhaps co-authored by somebody from within the Paleopath Association, that, or whom that's especially, uh, talking to or interacting with or gaining perspectives from folks who are really come to knowledge about paleopathology at all. So I think this increasing diversity of knowledge base is important, and we look forward to those conversations. And I must say these ideas grew from conversations I've had with Anne Brower and Charlotte Roberts, and I want to give them credit for that. Another thing we'd like to develop more formally is bringing the past, bringing the deep past, bringing our knowledge of the deep past, the disease and health, to contemporary and future issues, um, issues such as health and migration, disease and climate change, and so on. The WHO thinks are very important. I think we have something to say about those issues from our perspective in deep time, deeper than just the last 50 years or 30 years per se. And also, I think further, we can further develop theoretical orientations and applications such as feminist theory, identity theory, and so on.